I don't I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure we need a permit to shoot here. I think so. But we're gonna do it anyways. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond Film School with the Amber Living Vlog and I am Amber and today we're talking about locations, film permits, how to get them, and when you need them. So this past weekend I was on a short film I was hired to do and it was an overnight shoot and the location was the number one problem. So why was the location a problem? The location was a problem because we started in one area then we ha then we wanted to go to a different area and then when we got to that different area we were kicked out of that area because the owner showed up just like I don't know where they he wasn't called he just happened to show up and he was like what are you guys doing here so then we went to a plan B plan B but then while we were there we had to think of a plan B we did not have a plan B in place preparation people for a plan B it was we got there and we're like where do we shoot and it was kind of very I don't know why I said disorganized, but it was kind of disorganized because they didn't expect to kind of be kicked out of the spot that we picked. Well, how do you avoid these problems? How do you avoid location problems? And how do you avoid scrambling on set, figuring out what to do next? So we're gonna jump right into how to get better and making this process smoother. The first thing I'm gonna say is make sure you location scout. Go to the area you're potentially gonna be shooting in. Um, whether or not you have decided on that location, you always want to visit the spot you're going to be going to to check out noise levels, um, parameters, space, whether or not it's feasible to have a, an actual shoot in. So make sure you go there, check it out. Just being able to know the space before you get on set is a total valuable thing to have, visiting the spot knowing the area a little bit before you bring a whole crew there is so valuable and it'll make things go a lot smoother. So the second thing is make sure you have permission to shoot there. Now this is like common sense, right? But as filmmakers and when you start getting into the thick of it, you realize how hard it is to get permission. What does that mean? What does getting permission mean and why do you need permission anyway? Basically you need permission because you can either get kicked out, arrested, or your shoot gets shut down and you get massive delays if you don't get permission for the location you're trying to shoot at. Working in, working in indie independent film, you'll hear the term guerrilla style, and I swear to God when I hear this, it, it's a giant red flag. That means you don't have permission. There is no guarantee that you're gonna get what you need for the shoot. When you're in pre-production, when you're doing your prep work and someone says maybe one of your producers or maybe someone you know has, you know, said, oh, you know, I have this location and they say, yeah, I think it should be fine to shoot in. It's not okay to shoot in it. You know for a fact, it's not a guarantee. It's not a given. It's, you don't have permission to shoot there. When they say it should be okay, it's probably not okay. So let's get into private areas and locations versus public area and locations. Now, if it is private, people seem to think that it's easier to get permission versus when it's public because then you're going to need permits. So a public area is something like this. It is a park, it is a sidewalk, it is a street, it is something that maybe the city and or you know the state owns, something like that. And you're going to need permission from the city or whoever is in charge of it. And when it's public you are going to need a permit 100% you're going to need it no matter what unless it's just like you just have a camera like this and it's just you shooting basically if you have like more than one person you have crew you have gear you have anything like that you're going to need a permit no matter what and let's talk about privately owned locations this could be anything this could be a parking lot this could be a house this could be a small business you need permission from the owner of said business lot parking lot house you need the permission of the owner and the owner is basically going to be your new bff you need it in writing you need a contract you need to have a paper trail you need proof that the owner gave you permission so have a little contract draw it up it's really simple there's templates online just google location permission form it's really really simple when you're talking to an owner of a privately owned space you need to make sure the parameters of what you need and what their limitations are are very very clear on the contract also what you should probably caution is when say you have your cousin, they're like, yeah, you can totally shoot in my house. And the co your cousin is the owner of the house. This is their first time giving permission to shoot something in their house. There's always that, yeah, sure moment. And then once a crew gets there on the day, they go, oh, this is what it's really like to have a film crew in my house. They can still kick you out no matter what. They, even if you have a contract, even if you have parameters, anything, they can still kick you out. So 
how to remedy the, this problem. How do you prevent getting kicked out when you already got permission? There are a couple things you can do. Now, the first is make sure there are clear parameters. You tell them, you know what? We're gonna be shooting from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We could go over two or three hours, so 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., you know, can we have your house for this time? So make it worse than it really is. Make it worse. Hey, you know what? I have about 15 crew members. We have five actors, so there's gonna be about 20 people in your house. And maybe you know your crew is like 12 and you only have, you know, two, three actors or something, not five actors or something. So I would say sell it for worse, and then when the day gets there, they're like, oh, well, this isn't that bad. That is a tactic you can use. So maybe you've set your parameters. You let them know how many crew members there are. You let them know how many casts there are. You let them know the hours that you are going to need their house or business. But what are their parameters? Maybe they don't want you in their backyard. Maybe they want their grass not to be dead by the time your crew leaves, so they demand that you put cardboard on their grass. Do it. Whatever their parameters are. Maybe they don't want you in a certain bedroom you know, all these things, make sure that their demands are met. It is not the time to kind of, you know, push the envelope. It's not time to push their limits. It's not time to bend the rules when it comes to getting their permission and knowing their clear parameters. So another thing you're gonna need is you're going to need a designated person that is going to be the one that always talks to the owner or whoever is representing that space that you are shooting in. So it can't be like five different people. You need one person to be the point person. Say there is a problem and maybe the DP needs something unplugged or the sound guy needs your fridge to be turned off. The sound guy doesn't go and talk to the owner. The designated person goes and talks to the owner because the designated person usually has a way to finesse certain things that they can talk to them in a really great way to make it not sound that bad and they can negotiate certain things. It just sounds better always coming from one person. So how would you feel if you're an owner of the house and 10 different people from that film crew were like asking you a bunch of questions throughout the day or night? It gets really annoying and you do not want your owner or your representative of the house or location that you're shooting in to be annoyed because once they get annoyed, they get frustrated and irritated and then that's the start of you getting kicked out of the location. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. See, uh, wait, you can see the you can see the geese. It's not gonna jump in now. Don't look at the camera. I got it! <laughs> The other thing you're gonna need, and this is probably the last resort, but you're gonna need a plan B. Plan B! If you get kicked out of a space or whatever, you're gonna be like, okay. If we get kicked out of the house, my cousin has a house that we can use as a last resort, but he said that he is good to go as a backup. You always want a plan B. Preparation people for a plan B. No matter what, I don't care where you're shooting, always have a plan B. Plan B. Now, to move on to your public space and getting your permits. And getting your permit is actually kind of a simple process, as in you apply, and you get an answer back and then you have your permit. If only it were that simple because to get these people to answer you is another matter. You need to be persistent, keep calling, keep emailing, and give yourself ample time. So how are you getting your permits? Basically, it's you Google your town that you're shooting in or you know, city, township, whatever, and then film permit. A website is most likely gonna come up and if they don't have it, they're so small that they haven't had that request of them ever, which is like very, very rare because there's someone shooting a movie somewhere everywhere. Like it's, it's everywhere in the nation, all over the world. People are shooting movies. Sometimes they just have a simple link that says apply for a permit. If they don't have a link, give them a call. Keep calling, as I said before, keep calling, keep emailing because it is so hard to get them to respond to you. It's really, really annoying. I remember I was trying to get film permission for like uh, a, park in Long Island and they, no matter what, it was like they never got back to my emails. It was like the most annoying thing in the world. I was like calling them every day. I was on the phone, I was emailing them every day and eventually we didn't even need the location. So I was like, yes, thank God, I don't have to deal with that. Before you get your hopes up and say, oh my God, it's so easy to get a film permit. Nine times out of 10, in order to get a film permit to shoot anything on a public space, in a public area, you're going to need insurance. And this is why people shoot gorilla style. This is why people avoid that whole process because then their dreams are crushed and they need like a million dollar liability insurance claim, they need proof of insurance and it really sucks because a lot of people can't afford that. I would say just get 
you know, a plan B. Plan B in place, <laughs> no matter what, somewhere where you can move to. And that's exactly what we did the other night on my shoot. It was like, oh, we can't shoot here, we got kicked out. I'm like, oh, well, I guess we're uh, gonna shoot here. You know, we can't waste the day. We can't just shut it down. We need to get the shot today. And you'll be surprised to know that there are union shows. There are like giant big shows and big movies that never got permits for anywhere where they shot. So, I mean, even the big guys, they don't get permission and they get kicked out. That's what happens to everybody. So I feel like you're not a true filmmaker until you get kicked off location somewhere. But I want to hear your location horror stories. Please comment below. I want to hear your location horror stories. I know everyone has one. I know every person that has shot something has had something go wrong location-wise. And your success stories. I want to hear how you got through a difficult location situation. I want to I want to know how you got through it. I want to know how you rose to the challenge and you didn't get kicked out. You didn't have to move and you didn't have to move to your plan B. Plan B. It's my worst story for my worst film career day ever and we were shooting in a diner and we didn't own the diner. And what I mean why we didn't own the diner, it means the diner was not closed. It was open for regular customers and it was like my worst nightmare. The owner of the diner was like okay you can shoot from these hours to that hours and we didn't know until we got there we were supposed to be there for a good 12 to 14 hour day we were supposed to shoot nine pages in that day which is impossible for a diner scene because there's extras and there's like there was so many lines of dialogue it was crazy we shot that day it was like the worst day ever and i think the problem with that shoot is the parameters weren't clear when you talk to the producers, they were like, no, we had permission to shoot here. He said, we can shoot here for this day. We can use this section of the diner, X, Y, Z. And then when you talk to the owner, he was like, no, I said we could shoot from 2 to 7 and then 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. So they were not in agreement with where they could shoot during the day. So that's where they went and that's where the problem arose from. So I want to hear your stories. Please comment below. So that is it for Beyond Film School and this has been the Amber Living Vlog and I am Amber and please like, share, and subscribe because you gotta make the dream work. Oh yes, I am very, very happy to announce that we finally have reached a thousand subscribers. It's been really, really great. It took a long time. So now my next goal is 10,000, which is like, I don't know if that's gonna happen, but if you subscribe, you'll be part of the dream that I have to get to 10,000. That is it for this week, and I shall see you guys next week. And remember, send in your questions. I wanna answer them in a future video. You'll be featured. Tread it tighter. God damn it. What do you mean tighter? That's not, what didn't make any sense. It did. <laughs> Send in your questions. I'm going to answer them. Send in, your <laughs> Send in your questions. I need questions to answer in a future video. You will be featured. What do you, is that not tight? It's good, but do it better. Give me but, another one. What do you, what's better? What is better? You're the worst director in the world. Okay, just kidding. I didn't mean that. Just kidding.